Hi, this is Steve, N4LQ. We're going to take a look at some onions and some auto transformers and some in-fed antenna products that are available these days. And we've got uh, a bunch of them here. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the popular 9 to 1 type uh, onion that is very common these days. And uh, here we have some comparisons, a drawing that shows how a, a random length in-fed antenna is laid out. And this is your 9 to 1 onion, 50 ohm input from your station, and the output side is uh, 450, which is 9 times 50. And so it's looking for an impedance somewhere in the neighborhood of 450 ohms in order to provide a good match. And these are used um, often with 43 foot verticals, uh, random length antennas, and uh, they do require a decent ground. And the reason for that is because the ground is actually the other half of your antenna. Well, this uh, came from Ballon Design and here's some recommended lengths. 53 all the way up to 175 feet. Now, these things are uh, uh, advertised to cover anywhere from 160 through 10 meters. Uh, here's some alternative lengths. But anyway, 53 feet on 160 meters. Now you say, how does that work? Well, it doesn't work all that good. I've tried it. But you can make contacts uh, with these things. And if you have a decent ground system, it'll work very well, especially the uh, the 43 foot vertical I found <clears throat> does work quite well. So uh, let's take a look. Um, first of all, here is what's called the QSO King. It was available on eBay. I think it may still be uh, Maple Leaf Studios was the uh, name of the company. And the QSO King is advertised as covering 1 to 54 megahertz. There's the inside. Um, this is your antenna output. There's your input. And there's a ground terminal over here. This is kind of neat. Uh, pipe insulation, I guess it is, glued on. And that fits right down in the middle of the, uh, of the toroid, toroid core. Keeps it in place. I think that's a pretty cool uh, arrangement. So, uh, as you can see, uh, these two, from a distance, they look almost identical. Very similar boxes. Uh, this one is by Ballon Design, and it's a 9 to 1. It's rated at 5kW. Uh, be interesting to see what happens with 5kW on it. But, uh, again, 50 to 450 ohms output. And, um, Here's your, uh, here's your cores. Now this has two cores, and this one has one, but this one's rated for, uh, I think it's rated for a kilowatt. No, it's rated for one and a half kilowatt, and this one's rated for five kilowatts. So just adding one core um, makes a heck of a difference, doesn't it? Um, and again, there's your antenna output and your ground. This is laid out about the same way. Both of them are wrapped around the outside with some uh, Teflon tape and both of them use um, Teflon tubing to encase the wires. Uh, this is called a trifler wound. It's three windings and they go around here in an even fashion. And uh, Let's see, we have a, uh, a diagram. This is the actual schematic showing how that's uh, laid out. It looks a little complicated at first, but it's not too bad. And one thing I've noticed about these is they don't uh, they don't overheat. Uh, neither one of them do, and uh, I've really you know abused them, and they just uh, keep on going. But uh, for some reason, my signals aren't as strong as I would like compared to almost anything else I've tried. And I suspect a lot of it is being burned up in the ground. But uh, SWRs will vary uh, a little bit. You know, you're going to have, you're going to need a tuner, uh, a good wide range tuner. 
SWRs can run any, anywhere from 1 to 1 on up to uh, 5, 6 to 1. And uh, sometimes you can use the internal tuner in your radio, sometimes not. It just depends on uh, so many factors. And so that's, that is your uh, 9 to 1. Now, the next thing we'll look at here is the, the half-wave in-fed antenna. Now these are just called in-fed antennas or random length in-fed antennas. These are going to be called uh, in-fed antennas or EFHW, in-fed half waves. Uh, this one uh, was put out by My Antennas. It's a very popular model and I've encouraged a lot of people to get them and they're very happy with them. And the price is right. Um, there's not a whole lot here. There's uh, uh, two stacked cores. These are 240 series. Uh, Mix is 43 as far as I know. Um, that's what I've been able to determine. Um, it's cross wound meaning that we go this way around and then we cross over and go back the other way. The theory behind that is it makes the the beginning uh, ground here far away from the antenna. I haven't gotten any really great explanations as to why that's done, but that's that's how it's done. It's held in here with a couple of uh, uh, wire straps, and um, there's a couple of capacitors in series. These are 220 each, making a, makes 100 microfarad. Each one is 3K, so there's 6 KV, KVs, 6,000 volt rating there on that capacitor. That capacitor is necessary for uh, 10 meters and on down it makes an effect on even on 20 just a little bit. But without it your SWR would be very high on the, the upper bands. It's um, got a ratio of 1 to 49 so that makes uh, 7 turns on each side here adding up to uh, 14 turns secondary primary is two turns uh, the primary and secondary are wound together here so they couple very very tight wrapping and somebody said that has to be that way I don't know why but uh, I guess that uh, is for uh, to keep down the radiation around the wire and uh, let's see we have sort of a little thing here that shows how this is arranged it's an auto transformer it's not an unin it is an auto transformer and it's just very simply uh, primary and the secondary coupled together here and um, this is showing a, a 1 to 7 ratio two turns on the primary 14 on the secondary that makes 1 to 7 what you do is you square the uh, uh, ratio and it becomes 1 to 49 and that's what the that's what the uh, <clears throat> transformer is looking for at the end here is uh, 49 times <clears throat> times uh, 50 ohms so it's looking for around 3000 ohms or so and the, it just happens that a half wave antenna has an impedance of somewhere in that neighborhood depending on a lot of factors uh, but uh, it has to be a half wave antenna. You get away from that, you start having uh, ground current just like you would on this. So that's the difference in these two. Uh, this one is exactly half a wavelength or a multiple of a half wavelength. Now the history of this antenna started way back in the Zeppelin days and this is my Zeppelin and hanging out the back here is my feed line and the antenna. You'll notice that this ladder line is a quarter wavelength long and it acts like a transformer. It acts like this transformer. And that converts this high impedance on the end here from uh, 3000 down to uh, some low impedance. Certainly not exactly 50 ohms, but back then who cared? Um, there's no ground up there uh, to my knowledge. And so you don't need a ground rod. You don't need a chicken wire or anything like that. And that's, uh, that's one of the reasons they came up with this antenna. It's because it doesn't 
doesn't require a ground system. Your ground or your counterpoise is actually this little quarter wave section here. Well, that, uh, of course, uh, was put into uh, uh, operation in base stations, and basically it's the same thing, just turn like an L. There's your quarter wave feeder, um, and also, guess what? The J pole, the two meter J pole. That is a, an old fashioned ZEP antenna, a quarter wave on this J here and a half wave on the on the vertical section. Gives you a pretty good match to uh, coax and works quite well. Okay, so looking back here, um, this is, as I said, the, uh, the my antenna and this covers 80 through 10 and it's rated at, uh, at a kilowatt ICAS. Now he uses ICAS to rate his products and um, you know you try to find the definition of that and it's uh, intermittent uh, commercial and uh, amateur service or whatever but inter the keyword here is intermittent and um, they they tell you well it's half half the time off half the time on whatever I've I'm sure this could handle a kilowatt on sideband. On CW, you uh, on 80 meters, you would get hot very quick because uh, CW has a lot higher duty cycle than sideband. And I found that with 500 watts, she gets pretty hot. This is another My Antennas product. And let's see, this is... Uh, the MEF 110 it covers uh, 160 1 megahertz through 10 megahertz 160 through 30 meters and uh, it's also got two cores uh, they, they look the same I suspect this one may be a different mix other than 43 but I do not know what and um, it is also rated for one kilowatt ICAS. Okay, and then I notice there's no Teflon or tape or anything on these things. Uh, doesn't seem to matter. I don't know, uh, you know, what would happen if they left them off these. But uh, anyway, here is uh, the my antenna, their big brother. Uh, this is rated for two um, kW uh, ICAS. No doubt would be okay on sideband, but uh, again, with 500 watts CW on a long-winded QSO, I found that I could get it pretty hot. And eventually what happens is you reach what's known as the Curie temperature on these cores, and they lose their permeability, and their value is no longer what they were, and they don't transform anymore, and you start to see your SWR creep up gradually and then it gets to the point where you you're dead in the water so you got to stop and let her cool down uh, that's with 500 watts on 80 meters only again you got your same capacitors here 100 picofarad total and you got your same cross wiring now, oh I did forget to mention on this uh, MEF 110 it doesn't use the, the cross winding it's all continuous yeah, so maybe it doesn't matter, huh? Anyway, so what I did was cut some vent holes down here on the bottom and up here on the top. Glued some uh, drywall tape on there. Keep the uh, larger bugs out anyway. But uh, I found that, uh, you know, rain doesn't really hurt them. Um, it has... It, well, I say it had some very tiny weep holes, a couple of them down here. Uh, you may be able to see them on this. This, Yeah, there you are. Um, there they are. Very tiny. Too small. And the, the moisture will build up inside. Not that there's any leaks. It's just that there's uh, condensation. Cold air on the uh, inside. Warm transformer on the inside water con condenses and uh, not good so do drill some bigger holes 
MFJ sells one of these uh, one of these like this now and um, it's got big vent holes on the back and it tells you that it will get warm on 80 meters so I suspect it's wasting about 10 percent of the power on uh, on 80 meters but I don't know if that only occurs at high power or not it does seem like there is some point out there where you get to a certain power level and she starts to get warm but uh, now with with it with these vent holes I can run 500 watts uh, no problem I can sit there all day and run it not key down but uh, you know with CW so I built one of these myself and tried it out it works perfectly and very little to it you just take uh, take about a foot of uh, 14 gauge enamel wire and about uh, I don't know six feet or so of the uh, of another piece put them together and twist them so the first foot is twisted and then uh, lay it on here and run it this way till you get to the end here and this is the beginning of it and solder them together that's your ground and then where they uh, split apart here where where you run out of the short one <laughs> that's where your that's your input that's your coax as you can see here how this is done and then just go on around uh, till you have one two three four five six seven turns total and that's your secondary your secondary is part of the primary here they're together and then you cross over and you got your other seven turns so there's a total of uh, 14 turns it's one way to do it um, that this one needed to be a little longer but anyway it comes out the bottom it comes up the side and goes to the antenna um, jack or connect terminal on the side and uh, I just threw this together and uh, kinda hung it in the air and hooked it up to my antenna and uh, it, it worked just beautifully. Stuck a 100 pick of Farragut pasture across it. And so um, that I think pretty well covers what I wanted to go over. Um, again, if you got any questions, uh, put, it, put it down here at the, uh, the bottom and we'll, we'll discuss this. And also, there's a Facebook group now on Facebook for... Uh, in fed half wave antennas do a search on that on facebook